Hi everybody, it's Julie with Stitches of Love Quilting, and I'm going to show you how to use your placement guide with your mug rug kit. Or with any of our patterns, we always give a placement guide because, frankly, it makes it a lot easier to get it right. So, what you get in your kit is your pattern, and the first thing you'll want to do is open up your pattern, read the instructions, that's always good, and then you'll see inside you have the placement guide right here, applique placement guide, and then over here you have the pieces that are drawn in reverse for you in case you want to make it again. But with our kit, we have all the pieces that you need, pre-cut and pre-fused with heat and bond light. I'm going to sit this over here so I don't melt it with my iron since it's in a little plastic bag. There's our big tree, our binding, our background, and then the backing. Now, we'll just decorate this little plant here with this. One thing you want to be sure, especially with this kit, is that you put your background in the right direction. This one has lovely little Christmas words on it. So always pay attention to your background. If it is directional, you want to make sure you do it the right way. So to use your placement guide, you're going to want to use an applique pressing sheet. Now this one is one that I've had for years. It's got some little stains on it. You can tell it's well loved and well used. It's made by Bare Threads and you can get these at your local quilt shop or through us. Now you'll see with this, one of the reasons I like this one over some of the others is you can actually see through it a little bit better than some. So what you'll do is we're going to actually build our unit, build our applique design. Now you can tell on our placement guide we have pieces numbered one, two, three, four. We number them in order of placement. So what you're going to want to do is you peel your backing off your piece and you'll see that it has a little shiny adhesive on it. This is number one. So you want to lay it down in place and you can get this to stick in place simply by just touching it with your iron. So, so if you move this, you can always put it right back because it's stuck in place. Now piece number two is one of the spool tops. Let me get these little guys out of here. I'm going to leave my buttons in the bag because I love buttons and I usually include a lot of buttons with the kits, but sometimes they're very tiny, so you want to be careful not to lose them. So, we now put, peel our pieces, we're going to put number two right here, just like that. And when I'm doing these, I sometimes will just go ahead and give it a little more of a stick let the tip of the iron touch it a little bit longer on the piece that it's overlapping. This one is number three, which you can tell because it um, goes underneath the scissor tip at the bottom. Obviously, you can also tell because it's the only other one. Hello. <laughs> That's my humor for today. Oops. And some of my buttons did come out. Put those little guys over here. One thing you want to remember about buttons, don't iron them. If you iron your buttons, sometimes the color will just iron right off or it'll smush down weird. And then you want to lay your piece right on top. Right here. Oops. And get that straight. I'm just going to give it a nice little stick here. So that was number four. And what's number five, you say? Hmm, I don't know. Oh, I can see over here. It's my scissor blade. Now you can't see through the tree to see where to put your scissor. I can see a little bit of the line right there from my scissor, but I can also put down the scissor handles, which I know are going to be next, and I can see them through here. So if I line them up, 
and then have that, I know that it's gonna be in the right spot. You can also look at your picture. Well, I can't see it because it's underneath there. But in this case, you can look right here at mine. But just give your picture a look. You can always move it and put it back. And then put this right here. And stick that down. And then your little scissor bolt will go over the center here, just like this and hide that little seam. You can stick that on here. Sometimes the pieces that I'm putting on over the top that are accent pieces, like this little bolt, I sometimes will put these on after I've already stuck it to the background. So one of the things you wanna do with this is let it cool. We can move this now, get back to our cute little picture, see if we've done it right. Looks like I may have done that right. And we wanna peel this little guy off. You can see how nicely they peel off. You do, now this area is still warm. You wanna be careful when you peel them off because if you get to, it's fine. If you get to, um, what should I say? As my dad used to say when we were kids, rambunctious with it, you may just, um, you know, separate it all and it ravels the edges of your piece and you don't really want that to happen. So now, you can put your pressing sheet aside. I These pieces, your back, backing piece and your background piece are cut at six by eight. Your finished kit measures five by seven and a half. So really you can just kind of eyeball this or you can um, try. Sometimes the, you can see through it enough to be able to put this on here like this and then kind of tell if you've got it in the vicinity of where it needs to be. And I do, so this will be fine. Now when you go to stick this on your backing, no, background, why is everything a B in quilting? Background border, bindings, buttons. Probably forgot something. Bobbins, there's <laughs> lots of Bs. Let's have a contest and think about Bs, anyway. <laughs> Ha ha. Okay, so make sure your little guy's straight. This is a little tricky for me because it's upside down, but I'm gonna guess that that's right. And then you just wanna put your little iron on there, or your big iron, doesn't matter. I'm just using this one because when I demo, I like to use this little bitty iron. It's a steam fast iron. This is, I'm telling you, the best little iron ever. And so you just wanna adhere this down. It takes about five seconds in each area for the glue to kind of melt into your background. And then it's stuck on here. And then you are ready to add your, goodness gracious, Button your hole. batting. Oh, another B <laughs> word. <laughs> add your batting. In my case, with these little mug rugs, I love to use this Dream Fusion by Quilter's Dream called dream fusion batting it's kind of thin it has just the one layer or one side has the fusible on it now when you adhere your piece to this you give it a little bit more time with the iron let them truly become friends and I just let this sit on here for about really I would say it takes about 20 seconds to go all the way through and when I'm doing my stitching with these mug rugs, I stitch right through the batting with my buttonhole stitch because it kind of gives it a quilted look and you get both things done at the same time. In other words, you don't have to go back and once you've, once you've stitched your decorative stitches on it, you don't have to go back and then add the batting and then stitch around it to make it look kind of quilted. This kind of does it all in one fell swoop. And sometimes when you're making something that's a cute little gift or even for yourself, you just wanna get done with it because it's so cute and you wanna get it done and see how cute it is or you wanna move on to something else or you wanna make more of them, more and more. Sometimes that's fun to have multiples of cute little things. Okay, folks, that's it for mug rugs right now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>